In this video, I'm going to do some examples of how you would go about writing the standard equation for an ellipse. I am going to um, take the assumption that you've been working with ellipses, and so the vocab you already have down pat, you're used to the equations for both the horizontal and the vertical ellipse. You're familiar with your A variables, your C variables for your focus, and your B variables for your co-vertexes as well. All right, if you are not familiar with that, I'd probably take time to uh, pause the video and maybe take a sketch of this. Other formulas that you should be familiar with, you're going to have to find an A, B, and C in order to sketch this, write the equations of these ellipses. So A squared minus B squared equals C squared is a common formula you're going to use. The length of your major axis is 2A, and your length of your minor axis is given by 2B. So here again, like I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this because I am assuming that you've already got this background information with this. All right, just a real quick picture here of a um, vertical ellipse. All right, noting that the equation is a little bit different with your B squared being underneath that X squared and your A squared being underneath your Y squared. All right, but again, everything is labeled major axis, minor axis, and all of the other various parts. So here again, if you don't have a lot of background in this, I might pause the video at this point and sketch some of that vocab down on, on your paper. All right, now in this uh, first example here, it's gonna say, write the uh, standard of the equation for an ellipse that's got a focus at both zero, negative four, and zero, four, and a minor axis of six, and then it says sketch the graph. So we're gonna probably need some graph paper here. All right, now your goal probably needs to be to find your A, B, and C variables. All right, well, as soon as they tell you that you've got a vocal focus located at 0, negative 4, and 0, 4, that immediately tells you that your focus or your C variable is going to be 4. So let's go ahead and write that down. Um, so C equals 4 because those are your focus, so let's go ahead and put those on there at 0, 4, and then 0, negative 4. So there's my two focus. All right, now um, it also tells me that the minor axis of 6. All right, well, I have a formula for the length of the minor axis being 2b. Since I know that's 6, then I can set those two things equal to each other and find my b variable. So 2b equals 6. That means b equals 3. Okay, so I think I'll go, go ahead and since I did that in blue. All right, those are that's the length of the minor axis. It'll be, um, in this case, um, plus or minus three zero, all right, because my focus, I know, have to be on my major axis. That means my minor axis has to go this way. All right, so I would have a dot at three zero and minus three zero. So there are my minor, my co-vertexes, the, the length right there of my minor axis. All right, now I have to find how long the major axis is, so I need to find my A variable. All right, finding my A variable, I know C, I know B. Now I've got to use this formula right here. So A squared minus B squared equals C squared. So I can plug in everything I know. I'm trying to solve for A. My B is 3 and my C is 4. So A squared minus 9 equals 16. Add 9 to both sides. A squared equals 25. So then A has to equal 5. So that's going to be the length of my major axis. So major axis is going this way. So I can go up to 5 and then down to negative 5 right there. Okay, so I have both my endpoints to my major axis and my endpoints to my minor axis, so I really think I'm ready to sketch at this point. All right, I have a bad sketch there, but not too bad. All right, so I've got my sketch done, and I know all of my variables here. Okay, so A is 5, B is 3. So now I'm ready to write the equation. Since I know that this is a vertical ellipse, all right, then I know my equation is going to be x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. So it's a matter of replacing a and b and squaring them. So my b is 3, 3 squared is going to be 9. So the equation then, x squared over 9 plus y squared, a is 5, squaring that, 
to be over 25, and then equals 1. Alright, so the equation in the standard equation for the ellipse with this information, and then there's my rough sketch. Okay, so now let's take another couple examples. Alright, let's say it just says write the uh, standard equation of an ellipse, and they give you an equation, and it's not the standard equation. Alright, now you are going to focus on the fact that you know that you need the ellipse to be 1, has to be equal to 1 on both of these. So you're going to focus on, okay, well, how can I get this to be 1? Alright, and you know you're going to have to have some fractions over here. If I take 80 and divide by 80, 80 divided by 80 is going to give me a 1, so that's how I'm going to choose what I'm going to divide by. So on this one, I'm just going to divide through by 80, reduce fractions as necessary, all right, and then see if I can't simplify down to get that standard equation. All right, so 80 over 80 is going to give me 1. 20 over 80, real quickly, I can cross out the zeros and make that a 1 fourth. All right, and then 5 over 80, reducing that to those terms, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 80 16 times. So then my standard equation on my ellipse is going to be x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. All right, so this was just algebra manipulation to get it in the right form. All right, now looking at this one over here, I again have a whole number over here, but I'm not necessarily just going to want to divide by 2. Dividing by 2 would give me a 1 here, but then if I would divide this by 2 and divide this by 2, you know, I'm yes, you're going to do that, but it's going to since this is already a fraction, I think it's going to be easier to multiply by 1 half. All right, multiplying by 1 half is the exact same thing as dividing by 2, but if you've got to think of a complex fraction, x squared over 8 divided by 2, all right, it, I think it's just going to be more complicated. So if I would choose to multiply the entire thing by 1 half, distribute each one of those, 2 times the 1 half will give me the 1 there, which is what I want. All right, but multiplying, distributing to each of these other scenarios, 2 times the 8 is going to give me a 16 there. So x squared over 16. 2 times the 18 there is going to be a 36. So y squared over 36. And then 2 times that 1 half will give me the 1 there. All right, so in essence, yes, I did divide through by 2, but to avoid some nasty arithmetic, I changed it to multiplying by 1 half. All right, so just um, a couple other examples of how you can manipulate an equation that's not in a standard form and change it into standard form. Um, definitely, thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.